All right. We're streaming. We're live. I still haven't fixed the notification stuff. And you guys can't see my mouse. You can see me highlight it. Yeah, you can see me highlight it. Bam. Cool. Yeah, we're exiting host mode big time. Big time. What's going on, guys? I'm super freaking tired. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to hold up talking about SNS stuff for just a few minutes until people start to join the room. Uh, and for now, I'm just going to probably talk about Splat 2, which is fine because everybody's going to be talking about Splat 2 right now. But I'm really excited for the Splash, the Vanilla Splash. I'm actually pretty freaking hype. I don't want to play the Star 4 rotation. Let's lose S+. Plus. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I, there's a lot of questions that I want answered. Yeah, what's going on, Perps? Can you hear me? Yeah, there's a lot of questions that I want answered right now. I want to know if... My foot pedal over here, it's supposed to be. I want to know if Bomb Range is in the game. I want to know a lot of details about poison, like disruptors and stuff. I want to know how walls are going to work, which we won't be able to see at E3. Uh, the, pretty much the, the vanilla, the vanilla heavy is pretty much remix, which is crazy. It's actually a very like big deal that the vanilla heavy is getting the remix kit. And it's a big deal because the remix was ended up being the best, the best heavy, and it didn't have a very good special. And everything specials in Splat 2 are getting nerfed. So the fact that the fact that a vanilla heavy is going to end up being the best version of the of the Splatling in a game where it like should not have been good because its special was bad, like you know what I mean, like the the uh, the specials in this game are better than the specials in Splat 2. And a lot of weapons are good in Splat 1 because they have good specials. The, facts that the, re the fact that the remix was good without a good special in Splat 1 means that it's going to be even better in Splat 2, especially when you consider the buff that uh, Stingray got, where it now will... Uh, the Stingray will now mark... It'll give you vision on people like the Tenon Missiles do when you're not shooting. And of course, there's definitely... There's obviously going to have to... Oh, God, that's bad. There's going to have to be limitations on that. Probably what will happen is it'll take a long time for the actual Stingray to start firing. But still, being able to get vision on top of it all is a pretty big deal. And considering that there seems to be no Echo, and that the replacement for Echo is going to be, like, missiles and Stingray giving you, like, pseudo-vision, that's crazy. All right, this is good. Starting to actually get some ground. Now I have not been paying attention, to this, paying attention to this game at all. I just bomb rushed underneath a few times. I'm probably about to get sniped. Ah, dang! Couldn't get away. Had to kill those. So that's nice. But yeah, uh, so like the heavy is going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be good at E3 because we're probably not going to be able to equip run speed. And if we can't equip run speed, it's going to be kind of hard to use it and not probably that fun. So I'm probably going to focus on the splash. The splash gets missiles and mist, which is great. And for those that don't know, the mist is like the replacement for the disruptor. And holy crap. You're just... Just getting overrun. Uh, the missiles, the misses are the replacement for the disruptor. It isn't an instant impact anymore. The uh, grenade takes a second to go off, but when it does, it just keeps disrupting the same area over and over again. And unless the the, the translation is weird, which is a, definitely a big possibility, it seems like standing in the disruptor will actively drain your ink, not just increase your ink consumption. And it slows you down. And as you stand in the disruptor. It, the the effect increases more and more. There's also a what looks to be like a bomb defense ability that might be different. It has a different um a different icon than bomb sniffer. So they might be splitting defense into mains and subs. They may also just straight up be uh, getting rid of uh, 
damage and defense as well, and then just having there just be a, a, a sub-defense perk and not a, a damage one, we don't know. Although we have seen damage, so that's kind of unlikely unless they just had to get rid of that. Oh my god, did I just knocked the guy in the water? I did. Dang. But, uh, yeah, so the I, I am a little bit concerned that the mist won't be as good because there might not be bomb range in the game, and that uh, that sub defense might make it so people can just walk through the mist and not care. Although if I, if both of those things are true, I think that making a build because we know that the mist takes up forty percent of your tank, so making a build where excuse me as I try to not be too horrible with this bomb rush to get us some space, I'm not gonna pick up the rainmaker, haha. Uh, but being able to spam, so if the if the mist does take 40% of your tank, then we're going to be in a situation where uh, a pure of sub saver lets you throw a three with a full tank, and then I can just put on a shitload of ink recovery. I would probably to get bullets after mist, I would probably do two mains of sub saver and one main nine subs of ink recovery. This guy, well, the game's over. Uh, and that would allow me to put out so many mists that I, I think that even if you have like the, the defense to it, you'll have a problem trying to just ignore it and run through. Uh, and the, the sheer amount of them hopefully amounts up to being a decent replacement to the bomb range. And that would be my goal. My, my initial goal at mist would probably be ink recovery and bomb range. And then depending on what's in the game, like, my backup is just a pure sub saver and a shitload of ink recovery. And that should be pretty dope. But, um, yeah, I still have people here yet. There's probably a bunch of people streaming, so I probably should just talk about SNS anyway. But, I, I do want to just end it off with saying that at, at E3, I'm probably going to play Splash the most because it gets missed and, um, uh, Inkjet. So it gets, like, Destructor and Zuka. Uh, and I think that that'll be pretty good. It'll paint a lot. I should be able to experiment with the mist and see how good it is. Probably won't have my question about bomb range answered. But, you know, let's just fucking go zoomy. Uh, I probably won't have my questions about bomb range answered, but I think that uh, I'll get a pretty good grasp on how good they can be. The, ming the mist will replace Disruptor. Disruptors aren't coming back. Uh, I mean, it pretty much is the same thing. It looks exactly the same as the Disruptor. It just behaves differently. Instead of it being an instant impact like a burst bomb, it's uh, it takes a bit to explode like a splat bomb. And instead of it just being one big explo Disruptor explosion, it puts like a mist in an area. So it's the same thing. It just works differently now. And uh, I'm definitely going to be playing a lot of Vanilla Splash at E3 depending on how much we get to play, I'll also probably try out uh, Heavy. Because like I was saying earlier, it has the remixes kit, but better, I think. I think that Stingray is going to be better than... I think that the buffs that they just gave to Stingray... Oh, you guys can hear that coin. I think the buffs that they got that they gave to Stingray are going to make it better than Whale. And aside from that, it's the exact same kit. Uh, sprinkler sprinklers are also changed. Um, instead of sprinklers just being exactly the same, they start out painting a lot, and they slowly uh, paint less over time, which means that you're encouraged to plant lots of them, which also means that ink recovery is probably going to be better than main saver on this heavy as compared to remix, because what's going to happen is... Oh my god, that guy got me. Well, that teammate's gonna die. Let's just jump over here, all fucking stupid. I won't be able to do stuff like that in Splat 2 with poison with mist, but if I get like a field of mist just everywhere, I think that it will. It might actually be better. If I can get like a giant mist, a, a like a big field of like three to four mists up at all times, depending on how long they last and stuff, which is stuff I'm gonna have to kind of research when I go to E3. I think that that might actually end up being better than regular disruptors because instead of just reacting to people and being a dick and slowing them down, I can just control so much space that it doesn't matter that I can't 
uh, do things immediately. I'm a little bit afraid of Inzuka. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Push that guy back into a suicide. soon. Also, I think something that's going to be fun about Splash is... Oh, wow, gosh. Right, where's my team? I hear an Inzuka. Don't die. Should be Inzuka. Get over to the left. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that uh, if you get people poisoned and then you just pop up with the Inkjet and just murder them while they can't move, that's going to be hilariously good. Oh my god, really? That guy didn't get pushed back at all. He didn't have any duration either. Oh, whatever, we're about to win. Yeah, Splash does look fun. Um, That being said, I don't know if you guys played Splat 2, but the Inkjet was really hard to use, and it really doesn't do a lot of damage when it does Splash damage, and it's, like, objectively not likely that you're going to be landing a lot of directs with it because of how slow the projectile goes over long distance, so... I don't know how good that's actually going to be. I feel like the I feel like this the the two Slayer specials that they have, Inkjet and uh, Splashdown, are kind of relatively weak, and they're just going to be put on weapons that have good kits for actually like slaying, as kind of like a nerf to like give what make it so weapons are kind of like the slaying weapons are kind of going to be I guess balanced like Luna in some way like the good slaying weapons are going to get those two slaying specials that are like designed for you to try to get kills with them, but they're really not that good and don't have that big influence on the, on the game. It's kind of just like the support weapons are going to get these support specials that are just better. So like, there's a more of a reason to use support weapons, I suppose. If that kind of makes sense. ran out of fucking ink there. Fuck your sprinkler, Mr. Hydra. I don't know where this guy is. But yeah, I'll talk about SNS after this game now that people are starting to get here. I just wanted to kind of fill in the time when I didn't have viewers with some uh, some Splat 2 talk. But I am really excited to go to E3 and try some of this stuff. Uh, I really... I want a lot of questions answered because I really want to do good stuff, big things with Mist. Please kill him. Good. Pick it up, pick it up, just pick it up, just pick it up, just pick it up, good. Good, good, good. Nice shot, nice shot. I don't know where this thing is now, but of course this bubble, that's good. Good, good, good. Um, splashdown. I don't know how good it's going to be. I think that uh, I think there's going to be two initial. There's going to be three initial ways that people approach splash splashdown. The first is that they just don't care. They're just gonna kind of use it like a really weak kraken, um, like so they have like their panic bu bubble special, and they're just gonna use it when they get it. Uh, then there's going to be people that try to focus on it. I think they're gonna focus on it in two ways. I think some people are gonna try like quick super jump or something cheeky so that they can like use the big explosion uh, from super jumping as much as possible. But I think that the more um, viable version of that. The third option is just use a lot of special saver, and it, especially if quick response stealth jump isn't in the game. Instead, yeah, I just came back from SNS and I'm going to E3 uh, Sunday night. But instead of using quick response stealth jump, you use special saver splashdown, and you just respond with your meter when you have it, and then you jump back in and splash down, and it's a, it's a way to get back in safely and keep momentum. Uh, it's just that it happens every once in a while as a special, as opposed to every single death like quick response stealth jump. And that's what I kind of see Splashdown being used for. Uh, Inkjet, I just see 
I don't know, man. Like the the mobility's nice. It's just it needs a little bit of a buff. I think I I honestly feel like it needs a little bit of a buff. It these support specials are getting better, in my opinion. When people actually learn how to use it and and, and use them as a team, I feel like that the support specials are better than the support support specials in Splat One. The slaying specials should be worse, but not that much worse. Like it kind of feels like the inkjet and the splashdown are kind of like big nerfs, where it's like you kind of don't have a special. It's like giving something to ink strike in Splat One. And, I, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense because the slaying weapons, like, they can just use the special to kind of, like, get another kill or something like that. I don't know. Either way, I should probably talk a little about SMS now that I have people here. Um, and I'll return to the Splat 2 talk. But, uh, I mean, SNS was great. I feel like we did a really good job of kind of, like, giving a send-off tournament for Splatoon. I do feel that the stream had some problems, which is kind of unfortunate. And for me personally, uh, SNS, that entire weekend was just technology failing me, like so hard. Um, the, uh, like, I don't want to like make big excuses cause I'm not saying that we should have won, but I don't know how we would have lost or if we would have lost if, um, we didn't have all the technical problems in winners finals against Hanron because my microphone stopped working or my my I, I, my audio equipment stopped working uh, in the first in all three games in the first two games I couldn't communicate with my teammates uh, I couldn't hear them and some we don't I, I'm not sure if they could always hear me and it that was bad because uh, I'm the support player and I'm the one who makes all the shot calls and all this stuff and no, I don't want to get killed by this Inkzuka. So I'm actually going to bubble preemptively. Aw, oh, damn it. That guy was going to be disrespectful. I'm going to have to deal with this guy. Um, but yeah, I couldn't communicate with my teammates, and we were at a huge disadvantage. And the first game, uh, I, I, I tried to coordinate, and I was just kind of thinking to myself, okay, don't panic, don't panic. Like, like you know, like we're good. I, I'm just going to play smart and try to just wait it out until we can get to the next game and I can like fix my we can get my mic fixed and stuff like that. And I think I did play smart, but it really hurt us because none like and it was really painful listening to the commentators afterwards because they were saying stuff like, Oh, what do you think that Mario Paint can do to like do better here? And they were like, Oh well Hitzel needs to like um needs to coordinate his bubbles more and like he keeps disrupting people and nothing happens to him. I'm like if I could co communicate with my teammates like we would be doing that stuff. And it was just really frustrating because they were like it, like just publicly it was like getting blamed on me and it wasn't my fault uh we just didn't want to make a big deal of it and demand like re replays and stuff like that Be well because kind of because like i'm i'm staff and pixel's been staff in the past and like we didn't want to like have like a thing involving like favoritism this card bin is a pain in my ass um so we just didn't and it definitely like i'm not trying to make excuses but those first two games we were crippled and because it would have it would have been like so much different if we'd have been able to actually like if I was if, if the support player wasn't crippled like it's a big part of our game plan was for me to to be the one keeping everybody together and communicate like coordinating and this that and the other but uh and and when it happened in the second game like the first game we lost and it really sucked but I kind of kept my composure in the second game when it happened I was just like okay like I I kind of like exhausted my mental energy at this point, it was really difficult to, like, kind of keep it together. And, like, during that game, like, I just took the headset off, like, thinking that maybe, okay, maybe I can hear my teammates if I take my headset off, because it's, like, sound resistant and stuff. And... Is that guy still hanging off the wall? Yeah. Okay, okay, grab it. Let's go. Grab it! Come on! Go up the wall, dude. Sorry, I kind of stopped talking there. But yeah, the the second game, I uh, yeah, I, I would pause and call a ref. But since I was since I was uh, staff, like Pixel and I just kind of looked at each other and knew it's like because I was staff, it would have been like favoritism and stuff. So we just played it out, like no reason to cause drama. 
Oh, shit. Fuck, I didn't mean to pick that up. But, uh, and then the third game, uh, I just, like, we switched, Pixel and I switched stations, because it was like, okay, let's just switch and hopefully, like, if Pixel can't, we can't hear Pixel, it's okay. He can just listen, because he talks less than me anyway. But then the third game, it was more a, um, it was more a, uh, Zones, I think. Either way, I played Vanilla Blaster, and then the, uh, my, I couldn't hear game audio, so I couldn't hear if... I could not hear if my disruptors were were hitting or not, so I couldn't like call out like, "Oh, sniper's poisoned" or something like that. Right, we got the lead somehow. This is really good. No thanks to me, I guess. I don't know. I was kind of like pulling two players right there. That carbon's gonna do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm just gonna actually hang out over here and just try to stay alive. Potentially do some stuff like that. Let's actually like not die here. I just don't want any possibility of a comeback. But yeah, um, I don't want to make my story about SNS all about that because like it sucked and like afterwards it took me like 20 minutes of walking around just like I was so mad. Like, uh, just at a LAN, all the high feel, all the good feelings are like super good, and all the bad feelings are super bad. You know what I mean? And that was a super bad feeling. That like that was I was not happy. And uh, I after a little bit of walking around and stuff, I I eventually was able to calm down. And when we went to the two moon set, like Perp saw me. Like I walked up the stage, just kind of bouncing up and down. Uh, slap, slap my fist into my palm, like, just, I, I had, like, energy, and perps, like, afterwards, he was like, yeah, I've seen that before, like, I knew you were gonna fuck something up, and we did really good against two moons, like, we still lost, but it was a much different game, this guy, this game's over. Yep, over. Um, it, it was a much different game, and even though we lost, we didn't go out like bitches, so, I, uh, I was, I, I was happy with, I mean, my, my goal was top three, it was a pickup squad, we didn't practice, uh, I just didn't want to do less than top three because that's how I did it every LAN. And just so happens that every LAN in Splat 1, I've been knocked out by Dude. And Dude has the best record of any uh, Western Splatoon player in LAN. So uh, he got second, first, second. I got third, second, third. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It ended up being like really fun. And just uh, the, the whole weekend was great, man. Like having having the water park there was amazing like this was such a good idea to do that because all the other lands that we had we would show up and everybody would kind of be in their own little social niches before the tournament like for a day and then we'd have the tournament over two days and it was awesome like don't get me wrong like the lands were awesome and then everybody would kind of be in their social niches like the last day and then we would all leave and, and yeah the water slides were lit and just having it all we were all, all our hotel rooms were in the same spot all surrounding this big venue like smash was going on there too so we had uh, we watched we had Smash to watch after the Splat tournament was done. We had a water park and we had a theme park, and it was all within walking distance. And there was some pretty good bread. Well, I don't want to say pretty good, but there were like there was good enough food nearby. And <laughs> while well, I eat lunch, yeah. And uh, dude, like it, it it was just so hype because grand finals of Splat, like all the all the final sets, like towards the end of finals day, everything was hype. Like the room was so loud. Like we had. The VR arena messed up for me, too. So let me rewind back for technology messing up for me. Okay, so uh, let's see. What, what, what went wrong for me? Um, I couldn't communicate with my teammates on main stage in Winner's Finals. The VR machine uh, stopped working for me. Every, like, 10 seconds, I'd hear, like, a Windows, like, you did disconnected USB device thing. And the VR helmet would stop recognizing my head movement, and it would be really dizzy, and it would go all blurry, and the, like, everything would reset, and I had to, like, take it off. Uh, it sucked. And... Uh, the, if you look at my Miiverse on main stage, uh, there was a graphical glitch where one of the squids was just glowing red. I, I screened for Irik to put it on stream. I don't know if he did, but if you check my Miiverse, you can see it where, uh, like I, I took a picture of it and put it on Miiverse, like, at, uh, SNS3. And, um, my email that had the time for my plane ticket, like, 
was formatted poorly and the time that it was supposed to arrive was like way off to the right and it looked like it was part of like the, the like the legal details to the side and I got the time wrong so I had to fucking stay at the airport overnight which sucked because I went to sleep and then TSA kicked me out because we had such a small airport they don't stay open 24 hours and they put me out in public so I couldn't like go to sleep because like anybody off the street could just walk up to me and rob me uh, so that fucking sucked ass and uh, what else went wrong I, there was a bunch of other oh there was a uh at the arcade, there was a machine. As soon as I touched it, it stopped working right, and it started giving out random tickets, which actually benefited us because we got a lot of uh, tickets. But because I found that I missed my plane and I had to like get moving right then, I had to run away from the arcade, and just, we all had to hop in the car before I could cash in my uh, my um, my tickets. Unfortunately, I was going to get some dice. I wanted to have like my SNS dice. Although my luck at SNS wasn't the best, so maybe it's a good thing I didn't get those dice. And uh, I know there was something else really funny that happened, but yeah, technology kept failing around me. Uh, it, it, did you play that one too, Raptor? The it, it was the one where you had to like push the thing and shoot the ball up, and there was like uh, I think it was like a dinosaur, is what it might have been, Gator. Uh, but yeah, that one. As soon as I touched it, it started malfunctioning. <laughs> but yeah, no. The, but either way, back to what I was saying. The um. The the whole thing about having like the arcades and the water park and stuff was awesome because. You can roll the nat ones, yeah. <laughs> Were you fucking with me? Because that was there was like the 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 game that started going that messing up was like some kind of like dinosaur game of some sort. So it could have been a raptor game. Uh, but yeah, the the because after Splat One Finals, like we were so loud that Smash players were showing up. Hungry Box showed up. Oh, what's up, Sammy? <laughs> uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll get to, I'll get to you in a bit. But uh, but yeah, the 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 smash the the splat room was so loud during finals during top eight that like smash players were like showing up to hear to hear what the hell the commotion was about. Uh, Wobbles showed up and we all got to meet Wobbles in real life. I don't know if you guys know, but we used to team with Wobbles. He was on Squid Squad uh, back when Squid Squad was all one team, and uh, we got to hang out with him. And Hungrybox showed up, and I told him about how at DPG when we both got second, I wanted to show up. I wanted to walk up to him and be like, so. You got second too, huh? But I didn't say it because I didn't want to be like rude because he seemed upset. And he was like, dude, you should have said that because it would have been really funny. Put up a wall, Cherry. Put up a wall. Put up a wall. Whatever. Good enough. And, uh, and so Hungry Box was pretty cool. Wobbles was really pretty cool. And then Sammy uh, took, took, the, took my lead and he got fifth just like Mango did. And he went up to Mango and did the same thing. He was like, so you got fifth place too, huh? And uh, apparently Mango was talking about Team Beer afterwards. So that's like really freaking awesome. And uh, yeah, but so during finals, it was so loud that Smash players were coming in. And I was kind of bummed that I couldn't commentate because I didn't want anybody who was in top eight commentating, which I don't really agree with, but whatever. But what ended, it ended up being okay because all the Smash players came up to the back of the room to see what the fuss is about. And then I was explaining Splat to them. And I was kind of, and, and once I kind of explained the game, I started sort of commentating for them. Like my just my commentary practice just kind of kicked in. What are you doing? Oh, come on! I hit the button. But uh, oh, we killed that guy anyway. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, the the Smashers were really interested, and I was commentating, so that was kind of cool. Like it it uh it ended up turning into a positive that I wasn't able to commentate. And after all that, we went to the water park for a little bit that night. Because this was Saturday, and the splat, the Smash tournament went until Sunday. So Smash had pools day one, and like I think partway through day two, and then at, at the end of day two, they started doing like top 64 or something like that, and then they saved top eight for Sunday. So we watched a little bit of Smash. Well, I didn't watch a little bit of Smash. Other people watched a little bit of Smash on Saturday night, but we went to the water park. Uh, it was Sammy and Perps and I, and... I think Sammy, like, went with us, but didn't, like, go on the same slides. I forget exactly who it was, but, uh, it was definitely me, Perps, and, and Nine showed up, and we were just messing around, and just playing, uh, on the, on the water slides and stuff like that, and that was really fun. And then Sunday was fucking lit, because we got up, we did, like, the VR, we did all kinds of fun stuff inside, we, uh, went to the water park... We, it was pretty much all Sunday was Sammy, his girlfriend, Perps, and I. 
And which was like awesome because I didn't get really much time to spend with Sammy and Perps at DPG. Uh, Perps was busy kissing his girlfriend, and Sammy and I we were like we were like but we were like getting to be buddy buddy, but we weren't really like spending much time together. Uh, and I had pretty much spent all my time with DJ at DPG, so it was really cool to get Sunday to just spend time with those guys, and uh, like I had a lot of fun. And uh, Sammy's girlfriend is awesome. Uh, Sammy's fucking awesome. Perps is obviously awesome. Like it was just a really good time, and. Towards the end of the day, like, because we were exhausted from going on the water park, and what we ended up doing was we... Oh, that sniper? Got him. That wasn't a sniper, but... Thank you, Mr. Cherry. <laughs> Went for the kill there. But, uh, but no, Sunday was fucking great, man, like... It was, uh, we, we went to the smash room and like I was sneaking in beer and everybody was drunk and it was like, like being in that room, that smash room just fucking like hammered. Well, I wasn't like hammered, but I, I was, I was, I was, be, I was beyond buzzed at, at one point, but like I've been to baseball games and shit. Like I've been to like basketball and stuff and the, the, the energy in that room compared to like a sports game was completely different. Cause like first off in sports, a lot of people are just screaming because they're just, like, it's like, oh, fuck, I want the Phillies to win. Ah, and they're just yelling for no reason. But, like, nothing's actually happening for them to yell. They're just yelling. You know what I mean? Whereas, oh, hello. Whereas, like, Smash being a fighting game and a good fighting game was, like, fast-paced to the point where... It was fast, fast-paced to the point where... We were yelling and screaming because hype shit was happening that often, not just because, you know what I mean? And we were all hyped because we loved the game so much, not because we hated, like, people with the wrong color jersey on. Yeah, esports goes fucking hard, dude. Like, we were fucking screaming. Like, every time something happened, the room just fucking erupted. It was so loud. And, and like, the splat room was loud, but we only had, like, a small amount of people. This was, like, a big fucking stadium. Like, let me see if I can find one of the pictures. Um, I know I, I got I know I got a picture on my phone. Just give me a second to post this somewhere so I can bring it up. But yeah, top eight melee was nuts. Like I was drunk. It was like perps and I were sitting next to each other, and then like nine showed up, and like dude inspector were there, and then like all of a sudden B's behind us, and DJ's behind us, and Mario shows up, and it was just. Oh my god, yeah, I lost my voice too from all the yelling. It was just so awesome. Uh, <laughs> when uh, when Shroom uh, hopped up on stage, you know, like, he's a black guy, and, like, the entire time, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but, uh, like, it started DPG, like, DJ, whenever B would do something, DJ would be in the back of the audience just screaming, Let's go, B! Like, and we would all, like, chant it, and, like, uh, Shroom goes to stand on main stage, and DJ's right behind B, and he goes, Let's go, B! And B just lost his fucking marbles, dude. He was, like, crying laughing. It was so funny. Um... By the way, B's, like, one of the most, like, well, I think B might actually be, like, the most, like, person at these events. B's such a cool guy. But, um, but, yeah, just that entire, that entire thing was just so hype. And eventually what ended up happening is we went back to our room during, like, the last, like, three matches. And we watched, uh, in our, in our room. And, uh, kind of just kept drinking there because we wanted to hear Wobbles commentate. Because we couldn't hear the commentary in the, in the venue. But it just ended up being perfect. Like, we... Uh, we saw, like, the last thing, like, we all wanted Hungrybox to win because he'd been showing us support the whole time, it, w it was great, and it, it was just such a wonderful, wonderful day, and the, the, Monday would have been better for me if I hadn't, like, missed my plane and all the stupid shit with my email, but, uh, dude, Mullen, it was great, you would have loved it, but, uh, besides me missing the plane, like, I actually wasn't that salty about it, like, whatever, my fault, like, it's fine, and I had so much fun, because we went to, like, the arcades, because DJ couldn't get in the water, so, like, the next day, like, we spent more time with DJ again, and we went to the arcades, we were just having, like, it was actually a fun arcade, like, we were having a lot of fun just, like, doing shit, getting tickets, like I said, I'm kind of sad that I didn't get the dice, but then again, my luck was so bad that weekend that maybe it's a good thing I didn't bring dice back with me, um, it was, it was just so much fucking fun, um, I think, like, my only real regrets is that there's some people that I wanted to spend more time with, like, uh, like, I want to spend more time with Octobite, I want to spend more time with Shiny Hunter Zack, I want to spend more time with Nine, but he's going to be at, at E3 next week, so that's fine, uh, but there was just a lot, of, like, I was a little bit less social this time, because I was feeling kind of sick the whole weekend, um, just, the, I, I think I ate a sandwich at the, at the airport on the way to SNS that just, it, it, it kind of fucked me up, 
and I didn't really get enough sleep, and I didn't, uh, yeah, I saw Octobite a couple times, I didn't know it was him, though, that was a thing, like, I would have spent way more time with him if I knew it was him, because I think Octobite's a cool guy, uh, I just didn't recognize him, because he didn't really look like he looks like in his pictures, like, he looked like a short little, little shrimpy guy in his pictures, but he was, like, I think he might have been taller than me, um, and his, his accent was so thick that it just threw me off, but, uh, but yeah, like I was, I was sick all all day when I got there. Uh, during pools, I was really sick too. Uh, just I was kind of like dizzy, and I was I wasn't feeling good for finals either. I didn't start feeling good until after the tournament. Um, yeah, yeah, he was about the same size as me, and I thought he was like a little shrimpy guy. So I didn't. Uh, what's going on, Hydrus? I'm sorry about knocking over your donuts, by the way. I uh, I forget Hydrus did some kind of favor for me. I was like, thanks, man, and tried to walk and just kicked over his donut cup, so I got him some more. Uh, <laughs> but um. But yeah, no, I just, uh, I kind of just regret not being, hanging out with some people, and I was just really sick the whole time, and I, I kind of like was being a little bit less social than I was at the last two lands, be, because I just, I just wasn't feeling too good. And on Sunday, just, uh, it, would be, it being me, Sammy, uh, his girlfriend, Rebecca, and Perps, like, that was just, um, I don't know, that just was, uh, that was a really good time, and I wasn't really trying to change what I was doing. And then we ended up hanging out with everybody again when we watched Smash later. So, I don't know, it, it ended up working out. Uh, as it worked out. Let me see if I can get a picture, because uh, I know I took a picture on my phone, so I'm going to send one to, let's send one to Morgan, and then I can open it up. <laughs> there's, some, there's some bad pictures here. <laughs> um, let's actually, uh, let's find the picture of the main stage. There's some pretty good pictures. Yeah, we should we should do one. All right, Simone. The reason I told for you that I said that you should try to find a venue for us to do a land in like Texas is because we've done Northwest, Northeast, and kind of just like mid North. We haven't done anything Southwest. We did Seattle. That's the only thing. So like that that entire area. Like we've kind of made like if you take like America, we have made like this kind of like line around America that just. It just excludes, like, Texas and SoCal and stuff. Yeah, Midwest. Yeah, so it, it's just, um, I, I really think that we should do something there next. And I, I want to meet Mullen and stuff. All right, so I got the picture. I just threw it on Discord. Let me just bring up this picture of the main stage because I took this, uh, I took this, like, when it started. So let's real quick uh, move over to, first I got to clear everything. Then go to my monitor. Yeah. So this was uh, our perspective. The, there was like a row right here, and they they had like the players up here, and they had all these special effects when they when people showed up to the sides, all up in there. That uh, it, it made everything look really badass, like they were in like some kind of chamber or something. But it was just the lighting was really cool, and uh, like I don't know, it's hard to really like. It's just hard to put into words how, like, awesome it was. Like, how loud this room was. It was just, like... It, it, it was just so hype. Like, this was just when we were waiting for everybody. Like, this wasn't during any gameplay or anything like that. There was just hand warmers. Like, there was nothing on stream. But, like, every single time, like, someone, like, got a good read or, like, there was some kind of combo and stuff, it was just fucking hype as shit. And Melee, like... I think Melee definitely, like, has... De Melee definitely has it in it to, like, have, like, all those crazy sequences of hits and just, like, crazy combos and cool kills. And, like, this entire room was electric. It was so loud. And uh, I don't know how big that was. Like, it was a pretty fucking big ballroom. Like, that was a solid, like, like, like ballroom. And, yeah, the Mango, the, um, the Mango versus Leffen, I think it was. Like, what was the Fox versus Falco match? I'm, I'm fucking, I, I was a little bit tipsy <laughs> at the time. I forget exactly who it was, but that, that Fox versus Falco set was fucking amazing. And just, every time something happened, like, we were all on our feet, jumping up in the air, screaming. I just had my beer, and I was just fucking screaming. Like, sometimes I just turn around, and B and I were both have our jaws to the fucking floor, just, ah! just like our hands everywhere like it was so fucking great like ah uh, man it, w it was such a good time it was such a good time but uh let's uh let let's play a little bit more splat here turn back on chat and everything there we go there we go webcam's working working yeah uh but let's hop back into ranked um 
For me personally, I um, I think that all things considered, that we didn't practice. Um, uh, Pixel has like um, some like some bad stomach problems that he gets. It's like it's like chronic, sort of, and uh, he was having trouble with that. He was also having trouble with it at Squid Storm. Uh, but he he definitely like held it together uh, more than he did at Squid Storm. He was still like really fatigued, but he held it together. Uh, Mario was kind of fatigued. Um, Tic Tac couldn't sleep, so by like finals he was like <laughs> like uh tic tac was definitely sleep deprived and i wasn't feeling good so the fact that all of us weren't feeling good and we still like put that uh we, we still put it together for that set versus two moons i think was um i think like we did a good job and i showed up to that set um prepared for the the zimmy versus cherry the the quick respawn cherry matchup like more or less i i was the safe spawn i was the one staying back etc. I ran four mains of bomb range in as many games as I could. Uh, and it, I, I think, like, I, I played it properly. Like, I used my superior range and my superior, like, just painting ability, period, to kind of control the matchup between Dude and I to influence when we both used our bubbles more than he could influence it. And I think that I did a good job. The the Hammerhead Bridge set, uh, we made a crazy push. Uh, dude was on my radar the whole time. <laughs> yeah, Tic Tac played really good. Um, Tic Tac went like 17 and won one game. And uh, like I think that the Hammerhead game really showed like what I was trying to do because I kept I kept uh, just I keep keep keeping dudes back to the wall with disruptors and uh, bubble pressure, making sure that like when one of us used our bubble, both of us used our bubble, and that it, it, it ended up in my favor because I could have better positioning than him. So the depletion difference didn't really matter. And um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the map here. And like, oh man, that sucks. During the push that won us that game, I kept dude pinned um, underneath Perch while we were pushing up. I, I kept him pinned underneath Perch while we were pushing up, and I forced him to use his bubble first. And the second his bubble ended, I just bubble jumped on the tower, and we made the final push that just got us the game. It was just really well coordinated. Um, it was a mix between us just stopping them from getting an advantage and Pixel getting a double. Uh, in fact, there was another really crazy play that was made by... I think the most clutch play I made in my life was in the TD set. And that was also right off the the like the, the heels of Pixel getting a clutch double with an Ingzuka. Aw, oh, damn, I wanted to stop him from playing it. Is he not playing it? I guess not. Let's get behind him. Aw, oh, that sucks, that sucks. Um, yeah, the Zimmy and Cherry matchup stuff was fun. Uh, like, I definitely, I, I came prepared for, I came prepared for the Zimmy Cherry matchup, and just two moons in general, I'm really experienced with two moons, and I practice for the Zimmy Cherry matchup, because I'm, like, I mean, dude can comment on it, I don't know if someone wants to ask, but at DPG, we played some friendlies, and dude went Cherry before the tournament, and we, we beat him every game, and then after that, he stopped. Ah, that guy saw me. After that, he didn't play Cherry for, like, the rest of the tournament, and he didn't pick it versus us. And I remember him saying stuff like he didn't think that Cherry was good on land after that. So I don't know if he, like, lost confidence in Cherry because of our friendlies before the tournament, and then didn't. But this was different. I know that he's been playing Cherry a lot, and his opinion on the weapon has changed dramatically since, like, six months ago. Uh, so I knew he was going to be using it, and, like I said, I just I just planned to make it... Uh, I, pl I plan to make the matchup in my favor, uh, just using the tools I have available to me and like using bomb range. And uh, I think that I think that a lot of uh, it went in my favor because I think that Zimmy that cherries have an advantage versus the kind of Zimmies that are meta right now or have been meta that are really like aggressive and they try to just get bubble as much as possible. And the cherries kind of deny that and they get light depletion bubble, so they end up getting bubble more. If that makes sense. Okay. So 
Sorry, I gotta think right here. Nice, nice lead. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Now we just gotta not. Hop in some random matches? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're done work, just let me know. Yeah, I am not jumping in. But, uh, yeah, I, and also, in the Walleye game, um, like, Mario and Pixel were talking about it, like, physically, they were just exhausted. They kind of just ran, they just kind of ran out of, uh, steam. And, like, they were kind of jumping in too much and stuff like that, but he was, like, mentally, like, Mario was talking about, it was, like, mentally, dude, like, I was done. And I, I don't, like, I, I'm totally okay with that. Because, let's not die here. Sorry, I want to win this game. Uh, like, he said, like, just mentally he was done, and he was making bad decisions, like, because, like, his, like, physical exhaustion. And I was totally okay with that, because I think that if, like, like it, it, if Pixel and Mario had... Because, like, we had games where, like, some of us would do poor, and the other people would do good and stuff like that. And I feel that just, like, if if all of us were, like, at least, like, playing decently, and then, and then Tic Tac and I were playing really well, it would have been fine. But if, it, like, if, if you haven't been to a tournament before, like, it's very physically and mentally exhausting and th the fact that he was like dude like i just couldn't handle it anymore like the just like my body i'm i was totally fine with that like the it was it was a great set um i'm really confident that even though we lost a set i still showed that i have the zimmy cherry matchup under control and that i i just showed i did what i wanted to do i got i didn't do any worse than i done the pass at lands i got top three i i I think I tackled the Zimmy Cherry matchup really well. I'm really, really, I was really, really, really upset that I had all those audio malfunctions and I couldn't call out during the winners finals against Hanron and we lost so bad and like I was tilted so bad, like it, like I was just walking around fuming, like it was bullshit. Uh, and yeah, like again, like we didn't call for rematches because I was staff and we didn't want to show favoritism and we just we just wanted to be good sports about it, but. That was, um, because I feel like if we had beaten Two Moons, we had a pretty decent shot at at least bringing it to Hanron, and not, I, I just, the, 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 the 03 was just so stupid, um, and, like, again, listen to the commentators and how they were talking about, like, oh, man, I wish Hitzel would, like, coordinate his bubbles more, or, like, when, when he disrupted people, I wish people would, like, put pressure on stuff. It's like, bitch, if I could talk to my teammates, that would have been happening, because it was happening in every other set that we played. Um, uh, I, I don't know, it, it, that... Sorry, I'm venting about it again, but it it, uh, it made me kind of upset. But that all being said, at the end of the day, uh, it, it was an awesome tournament, and I I did I showed up and I did what I wanted to do. As far as um, like Zimmy and doing well, it was a great great weekend, despite like having all the technical problems and being sick and having like all this like I pretty much had everything turned against me. I was there was technical problems. Uh, I was sick. It was a pickup squad that we hadn't practiced with much, and we still got top three. Uh, I've gotten top three at every Splat LAN that I've ever gone to. I've gotten top eight in almost every tournament that I've ever signed up for. So, and I've gotten, I've only gotten first place once, but I've gotten second place a ton of times, especially towards the end when we got the team going that we wanted to. And I, I just think that, uh, I think I got a pretty good record, all things considered. Um, I'm not like the best player. But, uh, I don't know, it just feels like a really good way to end off Splatoon 1, and I feel like I, um, I feel like I definitely showed, you know, like, my muscle. So, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I, it was a great weekend, and I had a lot of fun. <sighs> Let's play a little bit more ranked. Um, this isn't the best set for, um for kelp but it's fine it's fine um and yeah it just i guess to sum it all up it it, it just despite the odds we did good it felt good it was a great way to end splat one the, the the water park and the theme park were fucking awesome like so cool it was such a good idea to do that like having the tournament and then right into the water park and stuff and how we could all hang out and it, it was, excuse me, it was just, like, a great experience overall, and I'm, I don't think it could have gone better. Like, the only thing I think could have gone better is, I, from what I understand, the stream um, had some audio issues. Uh, I know that we had audio issues just in general, uh, because DJ hadn't done the audio work this time, uh, which is a mistake that we're not going to make again in the future. 
and from what I understand, I know people didn't, uh, a lot of the stream didn't like the commentary, the, the way that we did commentary. I know that our goal was to make it so people at the event had a good time, and being able to commentate was one of those ways, but I think the way it ended up turning out is that it's just for actual stream itself. The, what ended up happening was it just kind of lowered the quality of the stream itself, which was not our intention, and it... I guess it's just an oversight. But, uh, and I don't really want to, like, talk too much about that, at least not publicly, because I don't want to, like, make it sound like I'm saying, oh, this person's a bad commentator or anything like that. It was just that, like, we're at a point where we're trying to make Splatoon look really good for esports in general, going into Splatoon 2. And we had a lot of inexperienced commentators, and, like, we had, like, fucking, like, sleep-deprived tic-tac dabbing and shit like that, you know what I mean? And I just think that, uh, ooh. Really? Oh, that must have been fall-off damage. That must have been fall-off damage plus latency. But it's just, it, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a smart decision for us to just let any other, any random human sign up. And yeah, 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 exactly, Hydra. So many people signed up that, like, it was just, it was just random people anyway. And uh, I definitely think that in the future that we should not ever do that again. Um, if we want to have like random anybody who wants to commentate just randomly commentate, it should be it should definitely be um, during like either pools or like have a separate stream for amateur bracket and have that be streamed by random people and have like the actual like professional staff uh, do the mainstream because. It just wasn't, um, it just wasn't professional, and, uh, I, I, I guess, like, a good way to put it, we're probably gonna lose this. No, no, we're not. Alright, someone's gotta go on tower. Oh, no. Let me just paint here. Um, I guess the way to put it is that, like, EGTV and Ink TV are gonna have to compete, which is good, um, because we're both gonna get stronger because of it, and I'm a part of both, which is great for me, because I can, like... I can help, like, the entire scene. Like, I'm in a good position to help everybody, which is, like, awesome for me. But, like, I'm going to E3 because of the job that Ink TV did, and I helped by commentating, and, like, I wanted to do the same thing for EGTV, and I was told no, and then, like, we had, like I said, like, sleep-deprived tic-tac dabbing, and, like, people that are inexperienced with commentary taking the seat above me, and I don't think our stream numbers were that good. So... I, I just, it, it was really frustrating for me to watch, to hear that people didn't like the commentary or they didn't like the stream quality and stuff, when it was like, it was a completely like a decision on our parts and not, like the audio stuff was technical problems, but the the fact that like the commentary wasn't received well, being, what was like our, like was just straight up our decision, um, I didn't like that and I feel that we're not going to be able to, there's been decisions, and, and if I, I can kind of say this publicly without pissing off all my friends, which I'll probably piss them off anyway, but there's been this theme of decision making at some of these lands where the quality of the event is sacrificed in order to, in the name of like, making it more fun for random people that show up, but if we're trying to like actually make Splatoon grow and make us look good and stuff, we can't be doing that anymore. Like, the event has to be good. People are going to play and have fun anyway. Like, stop fucking up... Stop putting Black Belly, Rainmaker, and Grand Finals. Stop making... Like, putting on, like, random nobodies that you've never heard commentate before on the mic at an event that's supposed to make us be our, like, send-off tournament and stuff. And, like, don't, like... Ma have the... Like, like, and stuff that I've heard also about, like, oh, well, let's, um... Let's, uh... Like... Play, let's put Turf War in tournaments just so we can like try to appeal to somebody. It's like, stop degrading the quality of Splatoon tournaments for like these like random ass reasons. It, it's just so bad. And and this is like my criticism to the community as a whole. Like, put on really high quality tournaments. Ah, we lose. Oh my god. Yeah, we lose. Well, the capture card stuff isn't going to be a big deal in Splat 2, and like things like interference aren't going to be a thing in Splatoon 2. I just, I, I, I'm, I, I, as someone who's trying to, who cares about Splatoon, I get really frustrated when people 
when people make deci- like when when TOs make decisions that degrade the quality of tournaments because they want to make like some subgroup happy. I, and, and like the thing with like Ink TV, I, I will admit that the reason that they that they've talked about putting turf war or doing like each round of the tournament be just one game type or something like that is to try to make it easier for casuals. But I don't think it's going to make it easier for casuals anyway. I think putting turf war in tournaments is going to actually negatively affect our relationship with casuals because now every time they're in a turf war game and someone kills them, they're going to blame us. Uh, and it's going to make the game harder to get into because the game doesn't provide you with a way to play turf war competitively. So it's just going to make us more include. Uh, ex- it's going to make us exclude outsiders more. Um, but I, I just like the way that we do tournaments is we take all the ranked game modes, we just cycle through the ranked game modes, and we randomly cycle through the maps evenly spread throughout the tournaments. And sometimes we'll make yeah puts on on, on like. And we sometimes make some tweaks just to make sure that, the, like, if there's an obvious problem with the map list, just, like, switch two, ma- two maps around, you know, keep it fair. And that's fair. It includes everything in the game. It, it, it includes all the ranked stuff. Like, it's it's ranked modes. It's tournament. Okay, like, that makes sense. Turf War has, like, a lot of problems lo- logistically and, like, community-wise. Just, it's okay. Just don't do it. Just play everything and just go from there. Like, I don't want to sacrifice the the quality of the game for dumb reasons. Like, the reason I'm scared of Nintendo coming along and them putting their money in is because they're going to make us play, like, Turf War and they're going to do all this stupid shit that's going to make the community hate them. Like, eh. It's just, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm starting to rant too much, but just, like, guys, like, TOs, just play, just, just, just do the rank modes do it exactly the same way that every single Splatoon 1 tournament's ever been done, and then build the pro- build the production around that. Splatoon Invitation will be different than the usual rule set. Um, I'm pretty sure that the, the at E3, the demo version that we have is just Turf War. So it's going to be a Turf War uh, tournament amongst uh, Dead Speed, Deadbeat, Rising Moon, uh, and whatever the, Japan- the, the Japanese and Australian teams ended up calling themselves for this. Yeah, exactly. It, it, the fact it, it it looked like a bunch of friends hanging out, as opposed to like a legitimate, like genuine tournament. Like it, it. Yeah, that's exactly um, the the case I'm trying to make. That if we're moving forward, we can't we can't look like this anymore. Like there's a difference between trying way too hard to be esports and everybody just trying to show up the resume and I'm wearing a suit and tie and I'm going to speak like a Californian newscaster, like, no. Like, definitely have a sense of humor, definitely make it fun, definitely put on a show, but do it in a professional way. Like, you can have your sense of humor, like, you can be, like, the FGC is great because their casters have fun and are entertaining and make you laugh and they're not being too serious, but they're also doing it in a professional way. Like, if you look at the product, it's good. And, like, it, it, it's fun. Like, I want us to be more loose and have more fun and, and and seem like a bunch of guys having fun, but I don't want to do it at the cost of looking professional and looking like a legitimate competitive game. Yeah, FGC is a perfect mix. Now, some FGC tournaments go too far to like the rowdy side, and I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about like the more high end FGC stuff, the stuff where the rowdy people know that it's important, and they um I hit something. The rowdy people know that it's important, and they behave themselves, but they still are being rowdy and having fun like th- that's that's what i'm aiming for i think that uh, i think it's pretty obvious i i think the, the the line to not cross is pretty obvious and i would like to see us adhere to that in the future uh but enough about me complaining about uh the competitive scene because all things considered i think that we're headed for a good place we just need to make the right we just need to make the right choices do the right things etc um yeah, Smash commentary is good too. I mean, I personally really like Marvel commentary and Street Fighter commentary. Like, I just like Capcom fighting games. Like, let me put this straight out there. I like, I I don't like Street Fighter like playing it as much as I like Marvel, but I love the scene. I love the community. The games are good, and I I just think that Capcom fighting. Just look at Capcom fighting games for how I want our commentary to look like. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, we have myself and the Jet for pretty consistent, like, wall breaking with that bento. So that's pretty good. We just have to actually properly put on the pressure. I'm going to get bubble rush top mid. Um, 
I guess I'll, uh... Ah, damn it. I tried to just dodge that for a second, but that blaster would have killed me anyway. We're kind of in a bad spot. Uh, I kind of wish I could have talked to my teammates to coordinate the bubble at the beginning, but I don't think this negative uh, momentum is really going to affect us that much. Uh, they haven't been able to actually get on tower. But yeah, um, I guess I should kind of revert back to what I was talking about when I started the stream, because a lot of you guys didn't hear it. Um, the new Poison Mist I'm really interested in. I, w I have a lot of questions that I want answered. I definitely, um... I definitely am concerned that Bomb Range isn't going to be in the game, because we haven't seen a trace of it. And there's also that Bomb Defense perk, we don't know what it is, that concerns me a lot. And if the the bomb defense perk uh, lets people kind of ignore mist a little bit, and there's no bomb range in the game, I think that I can still make it work in theory, just based off of a lot of assumptions and just uh, my gut. That since the mist takes 40% of your tank, I can wear a pure sub saver, and I can wear the rest ink recovery, and just have such a fucking field of mist around my team and around where we need to be, that it, it just genuinely uh, is still a problem even if you stack the, the the bomb defense and I can't use bomb range to do it at a further range. And I think that combined with uh, some good painting weapons, especially some bomb spam stuff, that will be in a good, uh, a good position. All right, get on that tower, get on that tower. Oh, that's really unfortunate there. Like I think I had I think that guy had Kraken. Watch out for stealth jumps to this guy. No? Alright, good. Unfortunately, our team wasn't able to live there, so I'm actually going to completely give up on this position. Just try to build bubble and stay alive for when my teammates come back. And we'll have to make another push later. What's the bubble now? My favorite duo cast... Um, I didn't really watch much except my own commentary, which I think I did a really good job at. I think that there were mistakes that I was making as far as my language and speaking, uh, saying things like um and repeating certain phrases but I didn't have anything to say. I did a good job at just not speaking when I didn't know what to say. And I was way more in tune with the game. My... my Oh, fuck, that sucks. My, call, my skills at calling out definitely showed. Uh, at the Inkling Open... There was definitely times when the, the pace started to pick up and my ability to call out really shined because I was able to talk very clearly and concisely about what was happening and do it in a way that's easy to understand. Uh, that came through a lot. Uh, that definitely did, but it was more the, the lack of the mistakes that was important. And our team just fucking sucks dick. <laughs> this game right now. Uh, we're not getting anything done. And, I, I don't know, it just... When I am, like, awake and am doing well with commentary, I notice, like, tiny little details and I find really intuitive ways to speak about, like, the little things that people are doing. Like, talk about how, like, that guy shimmied to the left threw off the other guy's aim or just whatever, whatever, whatever. And to, to really, like, have, like, compact, easy-to-understand speech... I definitely pulled that off, and I, when I listened to it, I was really happy about it. I had a lot of fun commentating with DJ and Pixel, 
I still wish I could have done some top 8 stuff. But it's whatever. And... Yeah, I, I think my commentary was good. I think that everything that I did wrong at the Inkling Open went away. And I just did a better job with everything else. So it, I was happy about that. But, uh... My... My goal... Right now... Let's, uh... Let's play 52. I have not been seeing a lot of defense this morning. Which means that as soon as I play 52 without damage, I'll see defense. But, uh... But yeah, my goal at E3 is to just play a lot of Vanilla Splash, see what I can do with the Mist, get a feel for it, so I can just really have some time to think in Splat 2. Uh, there's no guarantee that we'll get a lot of play time, but considering the way Nintendo normally has their setups, they have a ton of setups for people to come and just line up and play in all of them. And since there'll be eight people like every, I don't know, seven minutes going through for each setup... I think that, that, that the, the, the chances of us being played a lot are likely. Um, I know that Splat, some Slasher Deco, I'll play some Slasher Deco after this, that's actually pretty good for Maul. Uh, I know that... I know that uh, Splatoon's going to be more popular than like a lot of the 3DS stuff that was there at E3 uh, when I went. like We didn't really even spend that much time at the Kid Icarus booth and we got to keep playing. Splatoon's going to have a line, definitely, but I think that if we, we show up at the right times and we... We play Splatoon and maybe even Biltrin would let us get into the back room. I doubt it, but I think that we're going to be able to, uh... Well, ew, one main five sub... Oh, well, I, okay, I, I use a, a, a combination of main save and sub save with Slash of Deco. Because it, it, like, scales really good for Slashes after walls. Um, I just don't know if... I, I was probably going to do Special Saver, a little bit of uh, Ink Efficiency, Stealth Jump and Swim Speed, or Stealth Jump and maybe Come Back, or something like that. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that sucks. Apparently my whole fucking team was dead there. So that explained why the pressure went away as soon as I pushed up. I didn't think I was on the other side of that, but... Okay. Either way. Tower. Oh, my team is just fucking worthless. And these guys aren't even, like, using QR. Unfortunate. I think Anchor Recovery is only good if you stack it a lot. <laughs> my team fucking sucked. Yeah, like the just one, just one piece of gear that has one main uh, and three subs of ink saver, main and sub saver, just in any particular configuration, gets you an extra two slashes after wall. So it brings you from five to seven. It doesn't matter if you use, like it's not more, it's not any more efficient than using main and sub saver, and that's just usually what I run on it. So let's see here. Yeah, like, you want to be, like, really precise, and it's really easy to just slap um, a main and sub-saver piece of gear on Slasher Deco. Like, I don't have to go edit anything. Um, where is the... There it is. I think I have a main save, sub-save hat as well. that because that's what I normally use actually I think it's a shirt I think it's the shirt main save sub save where you at yeah there it is I usually do 
this. This is my typical slasher. Uh, five subs. Because this will do seven slashes right here. I'm not exactly sure what you're saying. Because I remember testing this and it was like, okay, I'll just throw on like one piece of gear that has both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So isn't that five subs of Ink Saver Main will do the same thing? Or it's from five subs to a main plus four subs of sub saver. Because I've always just done this. It's just, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because that five subs to one main. So that's, that's pretty much like three to five subs worth plus four subs. But that just seems like a little bit of a waste. Because I'd have to do more than one piece of gear. Unless I'm not hearing what you're saying. Although I probably don't have that. <laughs> but this this here is my... Uh, seven slashes, five subs. Oh, so five subs gets you the extra two slashes after a while is what you're saying. Hmm, interesting. Um, I don't think I have that. I have one main, one sub. Gear for, like, E-Leaders and Dynamo. Aside from that, I have this. So I could cut one sub if I do that. That makes sense, that makes sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't have that. Um, the only thing I have is stuff like this right here, where I have one main, one sub. Yeah, one, one sub efficiency isn't that bad. Um, and if I make that a sub saver sub, it's probably just going to... No, I have that, yeah. Um, okay, I'll look into that. I just don't have... I definitely don't have that right now. Um... So I'll just rock it with this, but I think this is still pretty good. I think this is still pretty good. It's a, it's a good build. I like it. Now what I also could slash should do is get some um some special duration on there. Like I could do something. Uh, um, nothing affects the recovery of white ink. It just happens naturally. Like, no matter what you do, it's still the same amount of white ink. Like, no matter how much sub saver you run, or ink recovery, you can't change uh, white ink. It just, it is the way it is. It's hard coded into the game. I do not have a lot of meter built right now. go. My family has burst bombs, so they can't do crazy shit to me here. <laughs> These guys are getting body body. Did my title not change? What does my title say? Because it should have said coffee with Hitzel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just didn't really talk that much because I just fucking bodied everybody. <laughs> so that was a fun one. 
Yeah, it was nice. I pretty much use the Slasher Deco the way I used to use Old 96. Like, just get Kraken, put up walls, push. Like, I wouldn't really try to slay with or anything like that, but I just... I don't know, people were fucking just... Let me do it. I don't think those guys are really that good. That or they were just distracted and I kept just getting them in situations where they couldn't, like, they couldn't really do anything about the fact that I was slashing at them. I look at my uh, my Discord right now. But yeah, um, I just uh, to I want to reemphasize for people that are new and because they didn't really get to explain it the second time I started talking about it later that I um, I'm concerned about bomb range not being in Splat Two because we've seen no signs of it, and we've only seen a bomb defense thing, which I have a feeling that it might give people resistance to the poison effect. And I really, I really don't like the fact that there might be an ability that you can stack that just makes you immune to poison and stuff like that, because that's like rock, paper, scissors at the character select screen, and there should just be a way to deal with poison built in naturally to the game. Um, and I don't, I just don't like that type of game design. Like, I thought Cold-Blooded was bad, I thought, um, I thought Cold-Blooded was bad, I thought Bomb Sniffer was a bad mechanic. Like, this is just bad game design, period. This cherry outrange in me is definitely um, a problem for me. Let's try to get this wall up. Three, two, one. Ba -dam, ba -dam, ba -dam, ba -dam, ba -dam. That's an okay wall, I suppose. Oh my god, I fucking saw it and I popped the Kraken button. A Splatoon styled podcast independent of those guys? Um. Oh god, I jumped to the wrong person. I don't think that I'd want to, Um. simply because. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There we go. I don't think that I'd want to, simply because an important part of that kind of podcast is the, the people. And, like, why would I, like, those, unless those guys do something, like, that I'm just so, not, like, mad about with their tournaments that I, I like, I, I have to, like, break ties with them, which I doubt that'll ever happen. There's no reason for me to... There's no reason for me to, like, get rid of that, like, connection. Like, I think that they do a great job with it. Why would I change it? This is kind of risky of me, but... Ooh, damn. No, we have not seen a single... We've seen clothes that had bomb range mains in Splat 1, but we haven't seen bomb range up, and they haven't told us what the new brands are, so we don't know if any of them are bomb range or not. Oh, Slasher Deco! Oh my god. <laughs> right as my fucking Kraken ended. Also, Mullen, I don't know about you, but I was pretty disappointed that the uh, the Slasher gets Suction Bomb instead of uh, Burst Bomb in the, uh, in the Splat 2 demo that we're going to be playing at E3. But, I mean, I guess I could see why they'd be afraid to give it Burst Bomb, because it's really good right now with the worst special in the game, and since specials are getting worse, like... If if the Slasher does good against, like, uh, Bubbles and Krakens and Inkzookas, and it has Ink Strike, because of Burst Bombs, they'll pro they're probably going to be hesitant to give it Burst Bombs. And I am doing poorly with this thing, this game. Then again, like, look at what I'm fighting. Fuck.
I don't think any of my teammates have QR or Stealth Jump. Yeah, rip my playstyle, right? Well, not necessarily. Um, I think that me spamming a shitload of bombs could... I, me spamming a shitload of bombs at a closer range as opposed to spamming a smaller amount of bombs at longer range uh, can definitely still be good. The CRB should kill me by accident there. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty uh, sad. Uh, Cause I do think that uh, I do think that splat and suction bomb spam is gonna be really good. Oh shit, that sucks. I didn't realize that we had the lead the whole time because we were doing so poorly. But uh, yeah, I think that I think that bomb spam in general is gonna be really good because there's gonna be no invincibility. Like the the power of specials to push is going to be less there's not going to be any bubbles or krakens to absorb bomb ru bomb rushes and stuff so i think that like in, in theory that 2 and 11 <laughs> i think that in theory um one person if i was to go a shitload of ink recovery and sub saver and stuff and just get like a fucking wall of mists just all the time just mists everywhere and then have two teammates uh two teammates with some ink recovery or whatever, spamming bombs, and then maybe one of them having bomb rush, I think that that would be an, an awesome uh, like map control kind of team comp. And then have like a have like a sniper or something as our last guy. Uh, and I think like the bomb and the bomb spam and the miss spam could really be good for controlling space and just pushing forward and stuff like that. And that wouldn't require bomb range. It would just require my teammates to all have like a peer of ink recovery. Which, if quick response self jump isn't like stackable or good and stuff, and we're able to actually like do stuff like that, I think it's totally possible. Um, let's do this. I haven't done this yet today. But yeah, not having bomb range would be sad because I'd like to have, uh, like if L three gets a good support special, I'd like to play vanilla L three with mist. And whatever it gets, like it might get a, it might get a stingray or something like that. I don't know who knows, but vanilla L three with Miss Stingray, with a lot of bomb range and ink recovery, with forty percent mist. Like I think that would be really good. The fuck is David Schwimmer? Why is there a level twenty three in here? <laughs> Splash does not have Miss Stingray. It has Miss uh, Mist Inkjet. Which is also pretty good, because you can um, you can uh, you can surround someone with mist and then inkjet down at them. But no, no nothing has ink st uh, mist stingray yet. Stealing my meter. I don't have crack in the top mid now. Also, like I've been doing really good with this weapon. And this doesn't have any bomb range, and I feel like it still matches my playstyle. Because I think, like... I think that, like, my, just if there's, like, one of these SMG weapons that paints pretty well, that has a kit that allows me a decent neutral... Aw, oh, damn, that sucks. I think that's all I need. And... Being like using L three and being able to just paint a lot and ah, oh, god damn it. Um, having like L three with a decent um special and like burst bomb again would be really nice. Like if I could have this, some kind of special that doesn't suck ass. Swiffer and not the E leader. There's some. Oops, didn't mean to fall down there.
I think that this is better than the custom jet, but the custom jet's better on land. The custom jet's just better, period, on land than the than the L3. But this weapon's definitely better than custom jet online, like by far. Like the custom jet really can't participate in this meta at all. It's only good on land because it's just so fucking good on land that kind of overcomes the like the meta. But online, this thing is just better in every way. Like, they don't directly compete, but... I'm getting tired of having, like, non-existent teams. Like, this is pretty annoying. But that's what happens every time I play uh, solo queue for too long. Alright, get on the tower, someone besides me. Please, there you go. Now the the splatling on our team has to do a combination of actually being aggressive to make up for the fact that we have a sniper and not sucking. Uh, how'd that person not get shot? Like, <laughs> all those guys are looking at me, and we all die. All right, all right. Stop bitching about my team, because my team's bad. There's nothing I can do about it. But, um, yeah, I do think that... I think some other questions that we need answered are, like... Ooh. All right, whatever. Uh, some questions that we need answered are... How good is Quick Crystal and Stealth Jump going to be? Because if it's really good, again, um, a lot of potential good stuff isn't going to be good anymore because you're going to be forced to one quick response stealth jump so you won't be able to run the builds that seem interesting. Which makes me think that there's no way it's going to be as good. I think just stealth jump isn't going to be back in the game. Uh, like, I was afraid that that wouldn't be the case, but I'm starting to suspect it more. Lately. I have to get these guys to back up. Splatoon 2 isn't looking much better, sadly. I don't understand what you mean by online meta and all that stuff. It's just that, uh... Like, the reason that Custom Jet isn't good on... is better on LAN is because without latency, it can rely on burst bombs. It, like, burst bombs and... Yeah, like... <laughs> fucking 0 and 12 splatling. Um... Without latency, burst bombs are a lot better because you can rely on them taking damage under their feet and getting stuck, like, right away, right away, right away. And the Custom Jet benefits from that more than any other weapon in the game. And that's why it gets such a big boost. Like, if you're not a fan of, like, quick response stealth jump and stuff like that, playing on land isn't going to change anything, sorry. Like, I, I don't really understand what you mean by that, because, like, every game's going to have a meta. It's just sometimes there's slight differences when you play on, in an on- or offline environment. Um, like, if you don't like metas, you just don't play video games online, because you're never going to find a video game where that isn't like that. Ah, okay, yeah. Hey, latency, I got you. Yeah, no, latency sucks. And, you know what, a little bit, um... Playing at SNS... Yeah, yeah, you just like the differences. Yeah, I, that's that. That's also every game, though. But I, I also, um, like, at SNS, I, I kind of had this feeling of, like... Especially looking back at Halo... You get to a point... Like, I play competitively, and when I play not competitive matches, like, when I play solo queue, when I just play at random people, like... It isn't, like, as exciting. Like, playing on LAN, all of your emotions are, like, to the extreme. Like, the, the, like the, the, the highs are super high, the lows are super low. Um, like, the, like actually playing on LAN and playing in that better environment is just, like, really stimulating and exciting and awesome. And when you play offline, it's not as, like, fun. And that's kind of like the way it is now, where when I'm not playing competitively, it's just not as interesting to me. 
it's harder for me to try. It's harder for me to get excited about it. Like, playing at SNS, like, if we actually have, like, local scenes and stuff, and we play all the time, it's gonna get to a point where, like, you wanna just, like, you only really, like, it only really, like, matters on land, you know? Ooh. Why are we getting destroyed by squiffers? Why do I have a squiffer and a cherry and a bucket? Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, Splatoon 2 is gonna have a more regional filter, but um, Mario Kart doesn't get affected by latency like anywhere nearly as much as the shooter does. It's, it's a completely different game. Why are they not on tower? Sorry, I keep complaining about my teammates because it's like... Like, I want to play the video game. Oh, fuck, I forgot it's tower control. But, uh, yeah, no, just, uh, Mario Kart's a completely different situation. Um, once you get into a lobby, it's going to last for a really long time. So the matchmaking can take a while because the games are going to take a while afterwards. And, like, latency that much doesn't really matter that much. Like in order to be that picky, in order to be picky enough in a shooter, there needs to be a really large uh, population. Stay on the fucking tower. <laughs> Damn, I just missed all my shots, and all my teammates are dead. Nice, nice. Someone else get on tower? No? Like, where is my team? <laughs> Come on. One before them. All they have to do is just be near tower and pull the trigger. Fuck. Hey, what's going on, boo? Yeah, no, I, I I do and don't want regional matchmaking. I don't want regional matchmaking because I want to be able to actually match good players. I don't want... Well, uh, I mean, at the same time, it'd be nice to be able to grind for gear and solo queue without having to worry about that kind of stuff, but... I don't want, like, the player bases to be split and then have, like, Japan surpass us even more. Someone's gotta just get on fucking tower. It's gonna be me, isn't it? Get on. Good, good, good. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard decision to make because... 
if I'm just going to be playing with a bunch of, like, random scrubs every single game in matchmaking. Like, I want, I want matchmaking to be, I need to go, what do I need to do, like, to, I mean, I can't avoid these shitty comps. Um, you know, like, the, I, I, I want matchmaking to be where, like, me and three other buddies team up, and it matches us against someone of our skill level with a decent enough connection. Like, I don't care if that means that we have to match up against Japanese squads and have it be a little laggy. I'd rather fight... I'd rather, like, team matchmaking be fighting, like, good Japanese squads than, like, shitty U.S. squads. Uh, also, at the same time, I wouldn't mind this matchmaking be a thing where we just trounce everybody and level up our gear and stuff if gear editing doesn't become a thing. Which it might be because of Amiibos. So, like... I don't know. At the same time, so... Like, I just want... Honestly, I don't really care about regional matchmaking. I just want solo queue to be... To become, I want, how do I put this? I want solo queue to become, I want less emphasis to be put on solo queue. I want solo queue to kind of become what it's supposed to be, which is like a really not competitive way to just play when you don't have friends on. Uh, which means, that, like, I think it should be the opposite of the way it is now. I think that if you get S plus rank with a squad, it should be locked when you go into solo queue. So you, you like solo queue just isn't really considered to be that good. And actually like being social and teaming up with people and playing as a team in a team game is what gets uh and, and what gets like glorified. And I mean like you not having friends and not playing solo queue like it like that should get you to just go play with people. Like there's a whole community of people. And not that, like, it, like if you just play solo queue, that's fine. Like, I don't want to, like, destroy the experience of solo queue players or something like that. But, like, it's it's just... It's dumb that, uh... Ooh, I didn't get that poison off. It's dumb that the whole system makes team queue bad. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, destroy solo queue. I just want to repair team queue, because team queue is bad. Are these guys that we're fighting? Not sure. That's probably Zuka that's not on my team. That's on my team. Got that guy. Good. Ah, fuck. Eh, I guess, but. It's not hard to just, like, hop into a Discord and be like, yo, it's squad. Especially when Splat 2 comes out and there's way more people. Like, even if you never use your mic or something like that, you should always at least be able to find people to play with. But, I don't know, it depends. I just think that, uh, Team Q... Like, Japan has, like, a really shitty attitude about this game. As far as, like, how you have to play solo queue or nobody wants to play with you kind of shit. Like, that's so dumb. And I think that, um, like, there definitely has to be a change in the way the game is set up to change that culture to to encourage more, like, team play. Oh, my God. Give me a, a safe spawn, buddy. Nope, you're just going to get snuck up behind. I got the lead there, but I'm not going to try to contribute to this push at all because we're just going to lose everything. as far left as possible. Aw, oh, come on. I got four hit markers. He has no defense. Yeah, Japan... Like, Japan, as far as shooters goes, shooters go, Japan is really immature, and they, they're not experienced, and they don't have, like... Like, typically, like, when the whole world is really into a shooter, Japan never does good. Like, there's never been a case of a worldwide competitive shooter where Japan actually showed up. Um, and the way that they approach the community is, like, really indicative of that, because they're all about, like, scrim 10, 
like, gotta have S plus 99, like, kind of stuff. And it's good for a community to have, like, to play lots of, uh, not scrims, because scrims really aren't, I, I guess, like, it's just, I have to use the term scrims with you guys, because you're not really aware of how shooters typically work, but, like, it's usually customs is what they're called. <laughs> God, this is painful. Um, it, customs are, like, when eight competitive players get into a room, and they just play and treat it seriously. Um, so I guess kind of like pickup scrims. But, like, when you're actually practicing as a team, you don't just do, like, scrim 10 and just go through all the maps. Like, you actually grind out one map at a time, where you, like, get two good teams and you talk about everything that happens and et cetera, et cetera. And, oh my god. Um, <laughs> he killed me before he landed. God, solo queue starting to become pretty cancerous today, guys. But um, but yeah, like, and Japan doesn't like show any signs of any of that. Yeah, like, there's no practical practice. The, like, the whole like, please SP thing is like sort of good. I went one and seven. This is starting to get pretty painful. I might just stop playing solo queue for right now. Go to turf war because I just keep getting these games. I'm not trying to be all negative, but yeah, like. Oh, I forget where uh, exactly my my point was, but oh yeah, it's just I would like um I would like them this the whole system to be reworked in Splat Two in a way that um yeah we can do it, Frank. I think you got this account added. Wait, do you got this account added? Let's see. Funny enough, I have Nas on this account, but not my regular account. Um. I have this account? I have that account? Alright, I definitely have you. Club Mids Plug Your Wii in. Alright, just go, I'll go on my main account then. Yeah, I would just like the system to be reworked to encourage more team play from everybody. Um, and stop having such an emphasis on solo queue because, like, it's bad. And, like, pointing at Japan and saying they play a lot of solo queue and they're better than us is not an argument because in every other worldwide competitive shooter there's ever been, Japan has never made an, made an impression, so... Yeah. Voice chat and solo queue would be great. Like, people are babies. Like, oh, uh, I'm gonna run into somebody who yells and screams. Just fucking mute them. Just have have solo have voice chat for everybody and have it really easy to mute people that you don't like. Because I'd rather take every single opportunity I can play. Yeah, Japan's also like new. Like I'm not saying that they're bad players. I'm just saying that their that their their experience as a culture is really bad with team games, uh, team shooters to be specific. <laughs> My hydro with two charges. Yeah. Um. But no, I'd rather have. I'd rather have communication in as many games as possible, and just fucking mute people if you don't like them. Like I know Nintendo will never do it because. For some reason, whenever somebody goes online and there's voice chat and somebody they don't like is there, instead of just muting them and moving on, they have to make it some big argument. Like, it's fucking high school. Like, it's it, it, it's dumb. But that's, like, people's fault and not voice chat's fault. Eh, but, I mean, uh, having voice chat with your friends is good, because that also encourages you to... That is, like, if, if Team Q isn't stupid in th this time around, having people add each other and just go into Team Q is going to automatically have, like, voice chat working and people will be playing and stuff. So I think that uh, I think that alone would be a good influence. I just really hope that team, that team Q doesn't lock your rank so that team squads are actually competitive. Or at least um, there's a separate rank for both, or just whatever. Like in my opinion, solo queue should have a rank lock. Because what it, what it should be is it should be like StarCraft, where every unique group of people gets their own rank. And if you, as a unique group, get a certain rank in team queue, you can't fall below a certain point for your solo queue rank, because solo queue is supposed to be like the, the like the not high level, just like way to play if you can't get a team going. 
And I'm, I'm going to stop complaining about it because I don't... Like, I, in the end, I really don't care that much. I mean, it's... Yeah, it'll be a worse experience in some ways, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. And I'm just going to, like, play the game and play with a team and all kinds of... Like, do, like, all that shit just anyway. So... It's whatever. Uh, let me uh, make a twin. What the fuck am I wearing? This is a set. Um. Yeah, Frank, just uh, give me a moment. I actually want to grab a little, uh, a little bite to eat. It's like three. I've only had breakfast so far, so let me real quick grab that. Frank, if you want to join this, I'll join voice chat when I get back. I'm back. I got some fucking chicken wings with some sriracha sauce. That'll be good. Oh wait, I'm not in voice chat. There we are. Hello. I'm a little bit of chicken. Get some sriracha on the next ones. I just want to put something in my mouth for now. Hmm. Leftover chicken strips, man. They're good. I can't hear you if you're talking, Frank. Doesn't look like he's talking, All right? Oh, that's bad. Nice, nice, nice. Almost a bubble.
Grab this right quick. Oh yeah, that, uh, that was the, that was death right there. Go ahead and drop him. Oh damn. I couldn't hide there because it was a blaster. That's a cool hiding spot, by the way. If you were playing hide and seek, it's just that you have to hold your thumb there forever. And that's hard to do. Watch for jumps. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, if Bomb Range isn't in the game, even if Sub Saver isn't in the game for some reason, I feel like just I'll wear fucking three pairs of Anchor Recovery and just Poison Mist the dog shit at everything. All the time, everywhere. That sucks. Hm, got me, got me. Alright, I'll wait to eat some more chicken after the game so I get the sriracha sauce going. Sriracha sauce is the fucking truth. Now I'm gonna go right, which is a no-no in this situation, but... There's bubble to be built. Because if they pushed while I did this, it would have been pretty bad news for us. But I was just confident that the... Yeah, see, now I'm gonna fucking go to where I'm supposed to go. And just like in Splat 2, in situations like this, I'm just going to have to have poisons up everywhere ahead of time before I go to places. Uh, so it'll be a little bit more about like setups than reactions. Got that guy. Caught him. I mean, I thought someone was going to be there. Oh, this is twice, poor guy. Oh no, poor me! <laughs> We got two snipers, I just realized. We're still doing pretty decent. Yeah, I think also after E3, I'll be able to sit there and think for a little bit. Like, what's the best special to have with poison? With the new poison? Like, missed what? Another bubble just went off. That guy down. Nice, 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 nice. Only two at the end. Uh, there's going to have to be crazy bullshit going on for us to lose here. I'm actually going to go to the right. Uh, I'm going to go mid then if the sniper's going to go right. See, having one person to the right now wouldn't be that bad. Killed that guy. 2v3. They use a special. Tower got stalled. Frank's shooting at tower now. This is starting to get a little crazy. Alright, good. I mean, Stingray was already good. Just, um... The shooting thing really doesn't matter if you can't move. Because you're still gonna be bait for everything. Um, the mist, really, it really depends if the mist is going to be actually poisoning people or if it's just gonna be pushing people back. Because there's... You're gonna, like, use... You're gonna want a different special depending on what actually ends up happening. If the miss is easy to avoid and people just avoid it, then you want something that takes advantage of the people being pushed back. And if you can use Splat Bomb Cannon, even with uh, miss, like you have miss, and then when you activate your special, you're shooting Splat Bombs out of the cannon, 
miss to hold people back and then splat bombs to take the ground that you force them away from is actually probably best. Um, Ink Cloud would be second best if, that, if that's the way it works out. Missed Ink Cloud would be great. And if it's on a good painting weapon, like if, if L3 gets missed Ink Cloud, that's fucking awesome. That would be such a good setup. And I really don't want to eat this too close to the mic. I'm going to move the mic backwards for a little bit just so I'm not just like eating right next to the fucking microphone and I'll just try to be a little bit louder mm. sriracha sauce is so good guys so freaking good Now we got the cherry. I don't know if it's the same cherry. I recognize some of the names, <clears throat> but these names that, and names that I recognize are on the other team. So that's something. A bubble. Oh, that's bad. I wanted to get that kill and have the sniper shoot the other hut. The Splatling, that would have been nice. Fuck, I can't eat it now. But, did not work out like that, but I don't think that we've lost really any momentum. <clears throat> yeah, if Mist is actually pretty easy to poison people with, I think that uh, Stingray will be awesome. Um, oh god, Mist Stingray would be great. No, I can't hear you, Frank. I haven't been able to hear you the whole time. Neither can stream. Um, and it might be on my end, because it said that, uh, like, I see you lighting up, but I don't see any, uh, I don't hear anything. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's all of Discord. Maybe Discord's set up wrong. This guy. Ooh, he got me, he got me. Rejoin? Hello? No, I still can't hear you. I'm gonna check my audio settings after this, Frank. I'm surprised that we're having this much trouble versus two Splatlings. Like, we got two Chargers. We outrange him. <laughs> but then we got this shit going on instead. I mean, I suppose I can see the Cherry having problems, but... Right, I'm gonna take our clothes, actually, even though... Okay, that's not bad. We're making a push now. Unlikely a Charger, a, a Splatling will actually be here to stop me from retaking this. Which is also good. But I had a feeling that he'd still be watching this. Aw, oh, come on, come on. I'm actually gonna watch Frank's back here. Oh, come on. Didn't know I was there. This person better get the kills, and he better get in the tower. I'm gonna go right, because I would like to have that. They've been flanking us a lot. 
That bamboozler has killed me in some bullshit ways. Probably latency, to be honest, because I just keep getting out of the way and keep getting the perfect positioning on him. He has such bad positioning, and I get hit anyway. There you go. There we go. Give me a safe spawn, buddy. Good enough. Poison that guy. came behind us. I guess that makes sense our teammate couldn't call out that he got flanked. Now I gotta go this way. Final go mid. God damn it. Alright. Discord settings. Um. Hello? Say something. Nope, can't hear you. Um. I don't know what. Uh, I'm just gonna back out of this for a second so I can try to get the audio fixed. Uh, what is this here? Hello? Hello? I need you to be in here so I can test it. Uh... Alright, the speaker is real tech high definition audio, okay. Voice. No, this one. This one should be it. Should be fixed. Oh, time for some more chicken. There we go. Oh yeah, uh, it updated. It probably updated it updated for you a long time ago. You just had to restart. I like it. Um. Oh yeah, the options menu is way better, and it doesn't freeze when I try to mess with our roles anymore. Like it can actually handle our server. My computer doesn't fucking freeze when I try to change someone's role. You can. But. <laughs> I think that you have to, like, go to, like, settings and then members, and then it's, like, it shows, like, a, like a 200-something, and you click on that, and then you can go through his roles. I don't know if it takes up the whole screen, though. The sriracha chicken's good. No. It doesn't? Wait, the, the, the splat charger doesn't have a laser period? There's no laser? Well, maybe it was um, it was just done in like the 3D editing program instead of an actual in-game screenshot. Well, yeah, I mean you would still use like in-game, but like they they like they opened up the editor and just placed everything like that as opposed to like watching a replay or something. I mean, it could it could all be from that, and they just didn't put it because I wanted to show the scope. 
That would suck if um, there was no laser on the scope charges, but I doubt it. True. Although, now the the scope is super bright when you try to right side peek and stuff, so. Okay, this is con. Um, being bright around the corner makes more, more of a difference than the laser now, anyway. so much. And here I crack into it and didn't pop it. I just really hope that the brushes still aren't like that good in spot two, like because there's so cancer. Um, I think that weapons that, in theory, would be good, but they didn't have good specials, are going to get better just because. And I think that any support weapons that end up being better at slaying than expected are going to be good too, because it seems like they're trying to give all the slaying weapons the kind of bad specials. Like, the slaying specials just seem bad, and they seem to be getting put on slaying weapons, like Splashdown and Inkjet. Aren't that good. Wait, what'd you say? You guys can't hear him? <clears throat> um, I don't know if that's if it's because of that or because uh, you're just really, really, really quiet. And I had... I had yeah, you're super quiet. And I had... Um, I had the speakers turned down. Okay. I think that, like, if I could get bomb range on Mist and Splat 2, that little situation there where I threw the Disruptor and it missed, like, that would actually still keep controlling space afterwards. That's what I'm wondering, too. If you get, if you stand out of it, does the effect stop? At least we're actually, like, pushing and stuff. Uh, stream, if you can tell me if you can hear Frank now, that would be good. probably gonna die. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yeah, I'm dead. <clears throat> I 
Alright, they still can't hear you? Okay. You need to make sure no one comes up right here where the sploosh is. Good. There's a brush too, yeah, I see the brush. Please help me, please help me. Damn it. Nice. <laughs> it says the settings won't be applied until next time we begin streaming so I don't know if you want to talk Frank and stream can tell us say if you can hear me or not um, yeah say something else <laughs> um, if you guys can't hear it, what I'll probably do is I'll probably end the stream. I'll just restart the stream. I'm not going to end it. Don't go away. Um, I'll just restart it. I could talk to myself. Yeah, I guess it's true. I guess like we could keep doing this and put it on the coffee until uh, until like I take a break or we do something else, and then that could just be a different stream, as far as YouTube's concerned. Man, I wish I had more chicken. I do have more chicken. There's not chicken tenders. It's going to be harder to eat, though streaming so that's the food for now put the microphone back so I'm louder and then later I have some wings with sriracha sauce that'll be nice it really does it's like this it's like this hollow plastic thing. Yeah, man, soon we're gonna be using this thing. This, this little butte right here. This pro controller, I'll have it in my hands. <laughs> yeah, man, it's... Ah, uh, clawing doesn't give my hand a cramp. When I play Zelda for like a long ass time, I I don't get any cramps. But or no, I, I I would like it. Yeah, no, I agree that um the buttons should be a little bit farther away from the stick on the pro controller for clawing purposes. But it's not. A rubber thing that's separate. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it'll get a little gross. I like how it feels in your hands just normally, though. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's just so lightweight and just... You guys can't hear Frank? Ah, oh, dang. Yeah, I think it, I, I won't be able, you won't be able to hear him until I restart the stream because I unplugged my headset and started OBS, so that sucks. But yeah, we're just talking about how much we like the Pro Controller and how it should... Uh, it would be nice if it was a little bit better for clawing. Yeah, the sticks are nice. Yeah, the sticks are Xbox sticks. The they don't have the same like concave. They are a little bit convex, but the the grips around it are really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the grips around them are raised, and then the middle is convex, which isn't perfect, but what you gonna do? Actually, nope. This guy's going right. I should never really have more than one person going right on this. Ah, uh, I tried to do a little bit of a shimmy, but... What's going on, Slimy? Oh yeah, the sprink so they're, they're encouraging to place more sprinklers and not just forget about the one that you placed. I hope it's about the same. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it.
Yeah, but if you are forced to place another sprinkler, the new one that you place is going to be better than your old one now. They have as much health as a Kraken, he says. Well, I, I, for a little bit, I thought that the Rain Cloud special was actually just going to be a sub that was the sprinkler. That you could, that it only lasts for, for a little bit, but it couldn't be destroyed. Although I could see them giving it more health, because if they give it more health, people are going to be encouraged to put new ones in there anyway. No, I mean I'm saying no. You're encouraged to you're encouraged to put new sprinklers up anyway. So it having more health doesn't really matter, as far as like than worried about them being too strong. Nah, they haven't said anything about walls. They just confirmed that they're coming back and they're not going to be showing them at E3. Yeah. Uh, they said beacons and walls are in the game, but they're not going to be shown. No, stream can't hear anything on my computer except uh, the game and me. I, t I spoke about nothing but SNS for like an hour, and then you showed up. <laughs> what did Mario say? Um, Mario walked up. Alright, so after we played a set with uh, the per... So... Uh, so, just for chat, I'm definitely going to cut this off of the YouTube thing earlier than this. Um, I mean, so, after we played, uh, after we played a set with this person's team, uh, we all walked up and shook hands, and we were all, like, giving hugs and stuff like that, and I didn't know at the time, but apparently Mario didn't walk up to that person, because that person apparently has, like, beef with Mario, and Mario was like, well, you can go fuck yourself, and just walked away, and that was, like, the last thing anybody from the team said. Yeah. That's what Mario said to that person. I don't think Mario spoke to that person, like, at all, aside from that. And, uh, I, but I don't know. I, I don't know, like, because I only found out about it later. Um, but the funny part was that I would, like, apologize to that person, like, on his behalf. I was like, yeah, like, I heard about that. That's pretty shitty. <laughs> like, sorry about that kind of thing. And we were kind of talking about it. And then the, that, that person just, like, all of a sudden just was like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, and just, like, walked away. And I was like, hmm, like, I guess I was being awkward. But then, like, Mario walked up behind me, and he was like, what's going on, nigga? So, like... <laughs> the person, like, saw Mario coming and just fucking... You just have to... You just have to place your reticle on them. Yeah. And they'll probably still take... Pl they'll take uh, priority over players because you have the D-pad. Because you have hotkeys for players, you don't have hotkeys for beacons. So if you put, if you aim right next to a player in a beacon, you'll go go to the beacon every time. Well, that's the way it works in Splat One as well. If you if you aim do I want to kiss? No. We lose? We win? What's going on? We win! Holy shit! How'd we win? <laughs> Alright, um, I'm actually gonna restart the stream, just because, uh... Well, they can't hear you. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm gonna restart the stream. Uh, don't go away. I'm just gonna, cause the, the, I'm gonna cut the coffee short before, um, all of that stuff, and then uh, and then have just like a wee chillin' stream afterwards. Cause yeah, so just let me real quick. What a wee chillin'. 